Hey guys, Lauren and Rebecca here with BizRock. In this week's video, I want to talk to you about the accountability for the clinical team. And I know last week we talked about uh, the front office team, but really today is all about the clinical team, which Rebecca, I know you're an expert in, and I know you're like, ah, oh, please, like, let me on it, right? <laughs> um, so tell me what that means to you. What it means to me, it starts off with ownership of your operatory. Mm -hmm. I know docs, I'm gonna do a little <laughs> bit of a pushback for this, but listen to me for just a few moments. Um, if you actually try this and implement it for just a few weeks, you will see the outcome. You're like, this is a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. It helps with having accountability with all the team members in the back. So it start, starts off with owning their operatory. Yes. And it's not just the doctor's appointments that you're owning, it's the whole operatory in itself. So it's gonna be stocking and making sure everything is clean. The floors are clean at the end of the day and in between your patients. It helps the schedule run smoother. So if anybody has been in the clinical space, you can know how this feels. You walk into an operatory, you sit down and you start a procedure. Your teammate helped you by setting up, which is wonderful, thank you team member. But you go to grab something that is not mm -hmm. out and then you realize, oh my gosh, I'm out. For example, mm -hmm. a cotton roll. Mm -hmm. the most basic things, you go to grab it and it's not there. It's like that slight moment of, oh man, mm -hmm. we missed the mark. So when you have accountability in your operatory, it helps to make sure that somebody knows to make sure that it's stocked every mm -hmm. day. We, so. we never get pushback on the hygiene side, right? Like doctors are totally on board, typically. I mean, we do have a few practices we've worked with over the years where they're like, look guys, I think every type of team member should be able to operate in their, under every single operatory. And it's like, yes, they should be able to, but what's best for the flow of the practice, um, efficiency in the office, yeah, and accountability, which this whole video is on accountability. So, okay, hygiene is like, okay, I hear you guys. Like the hygienists need to own their operatory. But Rebecca, you probably get more pushback from doctors on assistance owning I operatories. Do. But it's just what you said. It's going into a drawer and there's something missing. Um, can you tell me what happens in a practice when an assistant does own their operatory? Like what yes. that office could really look like? Yes. So when we have assistants in hygiene that mm -hmm. owns our own operatory, the office flourishes. Yes. So you're able to carry a schedule that is packed to capacity without the stress of that. Yes. Everything runs smoothly. And what I'm trying to tell you is you've got somebody that is like, this is my operatory. I want mm -hmm. it to look like X, Y, and Z, and it's done. Yeah. That's the biggest thing is for the patients to walk in and be like, oh, this looks amazing. Everything is set up wonderfully. Mm -hmm. My assistant's not getting up and down. Yes. That in itself is major. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have to get up during a procedure. You never want to leave a doctor alone. Docs, I know that a lot of you like to work on your own. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. But for protection for yourself, I always try to ask my teams to never leave a doctor mm -hmm. alone in operatory. So yes. having the, the things that you need and having the room stopped is going to aid in that. Love that. Awesome. Um, and now sometimes some of our practices, they want a lot of stuff in their operatory. And you know, some of our practices are really creative with all the different things that they can fit into their operatory. Uh, we call that clutter. We do. Uh, which my rule of thumb is if it looks like clutter, acts like clutter, guys, it's clutter. Um, but can you kind of touch on clutter a little bit yes. in the office? Yes. So when you're in your operatories, I always suggest your workstations being the counters on the side mm -hmm. of the 12 o'clock unit, stay clear. Yes. We have aerosol spray. We don't want anything getting on stuff and then patients touching it. Yes. So it comes to just like the video we did last week. We can't sanitize paper. So it's very, very hard when we have a ton of brochures on both sides mm -hmm. of our 12 o'clock units. And then next to the doctor, we have our sink with the cups and the mouthwash and all the things mm -hmm. that we're trying to help with our patients, which is wonderful. It's nice to be able to have those things available, but we can have them available in a nice little closed container and just put a few items in there. Yes. If you want some material for your patients to read in between when they're having to wait on the doctor for a hygiene check or just when they're getting numb that is perfectly fine to understand but let's lay out something fresh for every single patient just a brochure or two or have something playing on the television that way we can keep our counters clean and um, there are so many different programs you can get that are out there that will be customized to what the doctors have available in the office that can play on the television so that all of our patients can be educated 
Love that. And then it's in a digital format. And like you yes. said, we don't have to worry about having to wipe things in between. We can have all of those brochures put up. And if a patient says, hey, I want to learn more, we can pull out a fresh new brochure yes. and gift it to them. You can. The last thing I want to talk about is the floors. Ah. Um, I touched on that a second ago um, when I was just talking about keeping everything tidy. But I really, really, really want to hit hard on the assistants and hygienists to make sure the floors stay clean. Yes. So being any alginate. Guys, we know it flies. It's okay, it happens. I make a absolute mess with alginate, and I know that. So I'm always gonna have a little handy broom they have them at the dollar mm -hmm. store to keep everything nice and clean, and then take a wipe at the end and wipe your floors up. Alginate gets on the floor, and then also look around for anything that may have been dropped mm -hmm. during a procedure, and or after when they're cleaning. Cotton rolls, two by twos, mm -hmm. a suction tip, things fall on the floor. Mm -hmm. It's okay, it happens, we're all human, but just making sure that we pick it up in between patients and we don't leave anything down for the next patient to see when they walk in. Um, last thing on floors, will you talk about mopping in the office? Because this is kind of a fresh one for us. We were recently in an office and they didn't mop at all. I think they said once a week, once a week. which I think you and I were both cringing inside. Yeah. We tried not to say anything and then we addressed it at the end of the day. But will you talk about that after large procedures and just as you wrap yes. up your day? Yes. So it's very important every single day your floor should be sanitized. Yes. So if that means mopping, mopping them every day or mm -hmm. getting down, our operatories guys are small. They're not mm -hmm. big. Some of them are a little larger, but none of them are huge. I would get down on my hands and knees and just take a cavity wipe to them to make sure that everything is nice and sanitized. But in between each patient, I always say you need to sweep your floors to mm -hmm. make sure the material is up. And then at the end of every week, depending on how often your operatory is used, the um, rollers on your chairs, they pop right off, guys. I know most people kind of turn their chairs upside down, the assistant mm -hmm. chairs and the doctor's chairs, and they wipe the wheels because they do leave a black film on the floors, but you can just pull them right off, stick them in your sink overnight, one part bleach, two parts water, and it soaks all that gunk. A lot of times it's composite that's on the bottom of the chairs, and it soaks it off. Then when you come back in the next working day, you just put them back on and go on your way, and your floors stay a lot cleaner. I love that because, you know, you've said it a couple times, and I know you've said it in multiple videos but sometimes in dental practices we forget at the end of the day we are a medical facility and it's our yeah. job to provide a clean and sterilized experience for our patients yes. right yes so important just keeping it clean and tidy and it just makes our lives easier in the clinical space in the back just to have it where we're on a routine love it so as always guys we're here to help and serve you so please reach out to us if you need additional help otherwise we can't wait to see you and serve you soon